Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, August the 9th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, before I start talking about a guy who could upset the apple cart, at 168 pounds. Let me take a step back, draw everyone's attention to an interview of Errol Spence by Brian Campbell. Campbell's an excellent interviewer. He's the kind of interviewer who gets the interviewee talking. In that interview, <clears throat> Errol Spence is asked whether the Manny Pacquiao fight is the biggest fight of his career. And Errol gives a great answer. I believe it's an honest, heartfelt answer. No, no. He believes the biggest fight of his career was his fight against Kell Brook. Now, people may not remember, but Errol had to cross the Atlantic Ocean to fight Kell Brook in his backyard. <clears throat> right? Errol, in the interview, says he believes he would still be where he is in life whatever happened in that Kell Brook fight, but he feels that had he lost, his road to where he is now would have been a lot longer. Right? Errol's obviously a inward-looking guy. Understand, the reason the Kell Brook fight um, is more important, quite frankly, than the Manny Pacquiao fight is Errol Spence has now already made his money. Right? You know what they say. The first million is the hardest, right? Errol Spence was unproven, comparatively speaking, when he fought Cal Brook by beating Brook in the UK. Spence expanded his brand. Spence also encountered firsthand world-class hand speed, right? Was on a big stage in a big event. <clears throat> now that he's gotten the huge paydays, beaten the Mikey Garcias, the Danny Garcias, the Sean Porters of the world. He's had a great run. Whatever happens in this Pacquiao fight, it's not going to take the seven plus figures out of his bank account. Right? He's Errol Spence. He has the resume now. This fight, as trying as it is, it's not going to be as trying as when you're a hungry fighter trying to break into the big time, right? So I hope you give that Brian Campbell, Errol Spence interview a look. The portion I'm talking about is right at the beginning of the interview, right? Spence actually takes his time in answering questions in this interview. It's in my favorites folder right now. Next, let's shift. You know, 168 pounds is an interesting division. All eyes are on Canelo. Are guys bluffing in this canelo Caleb plant negotiation stalemate? Is somebody going to say, all right, all right, uncle, uncle, I give up. You win the negotiation. I'll concede these negotiating points. Give me the fight. Let's make this happen for the fans. Is that going to happen? Or is Canelo going to look at his own resume, say, you know, I'm in the Hall of Fame already. I have enough titles. I've beaten enough guys where I don't have to make major concessions to fight for the undisputed championship at 168 pounds. If I don't get that, the fans will know that I tried, <laughs> right? You know, the fans will know that I was willing to fight Caleb Plant, but that this is professional boxing. Price tags matter. They didn't reach my price. Right? So with big money behind him, wanting him in the ring, the million dollar question is whether Canelo jumps up to 175, fights Dmitry Bivol, fights Arthur Perturbiev, or whether Canelo surprises us and says, hey, look, Golovkin, you've wanted the third fight. Here I am. Player, come get me 
this November. Or whether Canelo fights a guy who, quite frankly, is being frozen out of big fights. He's too scary. He might be this generation's Archie Moore, right? Archie Moore didn't get a title shot till later in his career. And that's Demetrius Andre, a guy who's a problem for Canelo because Demetrius Andre doesn't allow a pocket to set, at least not a permanent pocket, right? So how's Canelo going to be able to catch up with this guy? And Andre has a great center of gravity. He's not going to be leaning over the pocket to get hit in the eye. He actually leans away from the pocket. It's very hard to hit his head. But what I want people to do is to look a little bit more closely at 168, because we have David Benavides about to fight Jose Uzcatege, right? The guy who Caleb Plant beat to win the title, right? Well, you have other players, and the reason I'm making this video is because I criticized a, well, boxing yesterday in the video I made by pointing out that a guy, Gabriel Mastre, who only had three pro fights, was fighting for a title at 147 pounds, a very deep division. I was just pointing out that that doesn't happen unless a fighter is very well connected or unless a fighter has done some tremendous things in the amateurs. Now here, let me just point out that we know Lomachenko, Got a title shot very early, right? Of course, Lomachenko won two Olympic gold medals. We know Alexander Usyk, another Olympic gold medalist, got a shot very early, right? Very early. Understand, he doesn't have that many fights now, and yet he was unified at cruiser. And if you look at his cruiser career, he fought several big names at cruiser. So there are talented guys who are getting shots early. I would argue too early, right? To me, it makes a mockery of the rankings. If you have a guy in his first, second, or third fight fighting for the title. But I have a secret. I think we all do. I have my private list of fighters who I've circled right, who I privately think have very bright futures, right, the kind of fighter where you hope the bet makes itself. They announce a fight involving this guy on your secret list, your guy who you know is a ringer, is going off at four to one, five to one, six to one, public knows the other guy. So you say, hell, at these odds, I know my guy has at least, at least, a 33% chance of winning the fight just on talent. So if you're going to give me, right, you know, 4 to 1, 5 to 1 odds, I'll take it. Well, folks, at 168 pounds, might be a ringer. Look, this is gambling. It's all speculative. We won't know if this guy's a ringer until he's in the ring with the Canelos, the Benavideses, the Caleb Plants, right? We won't know, but here's what we do know, and it's shocking. This guy's had five fights. Folks, you know they've watered down the belts. So you have regular champions and you have super champions from the same sanctioning body. Five fights into this guy's career, he currently is the WBA's regular champion, world champion, at 168 pounds. He fights out of Minneapolis, look deeper into his background. He's Cuban. He was an absolute monster in the amateurs. 130 wins. Two losses. Let me repeat that. 130 wins, two losses. He knows how to use length in the ring, maybe a bit too much so, because I'm not sure if this guy's great inside. But when you give him room to operate, the guy is deadly. 
gifted puncher, southpaw, great straight left hand. You need to pay attention to this guy. He doesn't seem to have great hand speed, but he has great boxing ability. In other words, he's working angles. This is kind of like a Brian Castano type guy where you see him, you know he's going to come forward, but you also know he's clever about it. He's not going to get hit head on with jabs. Rather, he's going to come in the side door. And with his power and his ring coverage, this guy's going to beat a hell of a lot of people. Just write his name down again, folks. He's already the WBA regular champion at 168 pounds. Five fights in, his name is David Morrell. Now here online, they have highlights of him. Just understand, this guy was absolutely dominant in the amateurs. Boxing is a young man's game, unlike Gabriel Mastre yesterday, who's in his mid-30s. Would it shock you to know that David Morrell is 23 years of age? So what I found in boxing is that things start as rumors. Right? I heard about Jaron Ennis at 147 pounds before I saw him. Then I saw him and I thought, my goodness, you know, why isn't this guy getting more pub? Right? I'm just telling you that there are a group of people following boxing right now who see 5 and 0. Oh, again, only five pro fights. 5 and 0 oh, David Morrell fighting out of the Midwest and not. Chicago, right? You would think when you're talking boxing in the Midwest, it would be Chicago, Vince Vaughn country, right? By the way, Vince Vaughn um, actually is involved with some fighters, right? He's in the fight game, or at least has been. No, this guy's fighting out of Minneapolis, right? Caleb Truax country. And just to understand, this guy is an elite talent. He's 6'1". If Canelo wants to surprise all of us, if he wants to think he's taking a tune-up fight, throw this guy's name in the mix as a viable opponent for him, right? Again, Morrell's record in the amateurs, 130 wins and two losses. Folks, in the pros, he not only is a WBA, regular champion. Folks, he fought for the interim championship in his third fight, right? Slick, hard-hitting Southpaw, who can literally knock a guy off his feet with that straight left hand. And this is a guy with boxing ability. Keep an eye on him. As I like to say, the best bets make themselves. In other words, if you're anywhere and you hear that you're getting a plus 200 on Terrence Crawford at 147 pounds, before you find out the name of his opponent, you know Crawford at 147 pounds is a monster. Right? So, you know, get in line to make the bet, then you could tap the shoulder of the guy in front of you or the woman in front of you and say, hey, who's Crawford fighting? Right? David Morrell, this fighter, I believe the bets are going to make themselves. At 168 pounds, I think the world of Khaled Plant, I'm one of those who believes Khaled Plant has an excellent opportunity to beat Canelo. I believe Khaled Plant has one of boxing's more underrated, sudden left hooks, right? In fact, I believe he might be inverted, right? At 168, I also believe in David Benavides. Understand, Benavides is unbeaten as I make this video. He's already been the champ at 168 twice, right? I believe Benavides is one of the few guys who could meet Canelo in the pocket, and then it's anybody's guess who wins that fight. Understand, Benavides is a blessed puncher. Where Benavides would run into trouble 
is with movement. Right? Well, just understand, at 168, right, given that Billy Joe Saunders is taking time away from the ring, and I personally hope he retires. Right? I think the aim for these professional fighters is to leave the ring with money and their health. Right? Billy Joe Saunders, according to reports, has at least seven figures in the bank. His eye socket got cracked. What's the point of continuing? I know everyone knows your name now and stuff like that. There are positions in the sport that don't require you being in the ring. Right? If Billy Joe hit the booth, he'd be interesting. If Billy Joe did YouTube videos, he'd be interesting. Right, so at 168, if you hear that someone is coming up to 168 trying to get a belt from a guy who's not a super champion, right, that person could be Golovkin. If they say David Morrell's name, I need for you to pause a bit. I need for you to say, okay, well, what are the odds? I need for you to realize that even though conventional metrics would have that fight being a mismatch, right? Golovkin, a lot of professional experience. David Morrell, five pro fights. This is that ringer who just might be far better than advertised. He's on my list of fighters to watch. I hope you give him a look, especially now that we have Flux at 168, right? Understand, if that canelo Callet plant fight falls apart, Canelo's going to be looking for an opponent, Plant is going to be looking for an opponent. Also, eventually, I believe guys like Demetrius Andre are going to say, look, I need to force these guys to fight me. So if they were at 168, I need to be at 168. Golovkin, the same thing. Right? I need to be in the division to get the look. You're going to hear some big names suddenly pop out the woodwork. They're going to see David Morrell and they're going to say, hell, this guy's only had five pro fights. How could he beat me? They're going to look on his resume. They're going to say, gee, he hasn't beaten big names. They're going to say, what can a guy from Minneapolis do? They're not going to realize this guy came up in Cuba's amateur system. Right? They're not going to realize this guy in 132 amateur fights won 130 of them. They're not going to realize that this guy right now might be one of the harder punchers in boxing. Keep an eye on him. This is how money's made. When you discover fighters that aren't in the popular conversation at the moment, right? When people really don't know much about the guy. Then the guy shows up and the guy's ferocious. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you have any David Morrell stories you want to share with the people here, if you know of any other sleeper fighters at 168 or any other division who are on your secret list, who you want to share with the public. I hope you do so in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.